In part 1 and part 2 of this example, we looked at the um, control voltages required to achieve uh, two specified power flow values, one positive and one negative. Uh, in this video, part 3, we will look at the uh, DC link current corresponding to those two cases of uh, power flow. This is the uh, example two-pole converter that we are studying. It interfaces a 440 volts DC source to a 340 volts peak 60 hertz AC grid. The inductance is 2 millihenry with a series resistance of uh, 0.10. And uh, we were considering uh, two cases in uh, part 1 and part 2. Uh, the first case is uh, case 1 is a power flow of 5 kilowatt active power from the DC side to the grid at 0.866 lagging power factor. And case 2 is a reverse power flow that is um, 5 kilowatt power flow from the AC grid to the DC uh, side. And this is uh, at unity power factor in, uh, in case 2. Corresponding to this example, we have already done calculating the required control voltages VCA for leg A and VCB for leg B so that the given power conditions are met. And uh, in doing so, we also looked at several um, average and uh, instantaneous um, waveforms um, to, to understand the different cases better. In this video, um, our objective is to look at the average DC link current, this I sub D, its average value. Uh, corresponding to these two uh, cases of power flow. Okay, so we'll start with case one, which is a power flow of 5 kilowatt from the DC side to the AC side at a lagging power factor. And to recap how we calculated the control voltages using phase analysis. So essentially we started with the ideal transformer based average model. We defined the grid voltage as the reference phaser, 340 angle zero. Based on the uh, power and the power factor requirement, we calculated the grid current, came out to be this phaser. Then we used um, a KVL around the secondary loop, um, and uh, BR is RIG, is this phaser. VL, J omega L, IG is shown, is shown here. And uh, therefore, VAB, which is the sum of um, VG, VL, and VR as phasers, comes out to be uh, 356.33 angle, 3.295 degrees. Um, then the control voltage as a phasor is simply VAB over V sub D, which is uh, this quantity. Okay. And finally, what is uh, very important for this part, part 3, where we calculate the average DC current, we need this control voltage in time domain. So one thing to note is uh, we can do um, uh, up to this point using phasor analysis, up to calculating the control voltages. Uh, but in order to calculate the DC link current or any of the powers, those are um, non-linear, uh, therefore we have to deal with the time domain. Okay. So the control voltage in time domain VC of T uh, from the phaser is 0.792 peak value sinusoidal signal, uh, sine 377T plus the same leading angle 3.295 degrees. Okay, we can use the same uh, ideal transformer based average model to calculate the DC link current as well. But one thing that I should uh, emphasize here is that um, this VC, even though it is called the control voltage, it is really simply the turns ratio of this uh, ideal transformer. In fact, it, the model is 1 is to the effective D of T, uh, where D is dA minus dB, the individual duty ratios of the two poles. Uh, it's just that the D of T is equal to VC of T, so we use that uh, in this uh, in this sphere. Okay. So the key point is the VC is the turns ratio does not have any, uh, it, it does not have the unit of voltage, it is, it's a unitless uh, turns ratio. So from the average model, the um, DC link current is given simply by the product of the secondary current IG times the turns ratio. So ID average, the bar denotes the average, is uh, the turns ratio VC of T times the secondary current which is IG of T or we can write VC as D, so ID of T is also the uh, duty ratio, effective duty ratio times IG of T, since D of T is equal to VC of T. And uh, from the previous slide, we saw that the VC of T or uh, D of T, both are the same, is uh, 0.792, so it's a sinusoidal signal uh, with a peak value of 0.792 uh, and uh, with a phase angle of 3.295 leaning with respect to the grid voltage. And we also saw that the grid current is uh, 33.96 peak and it is a uh, lagging uh, with a power factor angle of uh, 30 degrees. Therefore, the um, DC link current is simply the product of these two sine quantities. So the uh, 
33.96 times 0.792 is 26.9 and then you have the two sine terms the one with uh, 3.29 degrees and the other one with minus 30 degrees but both at uh, 60 hertz 377 radians per second okay, then we have this uh, trigonometric expression uh, sine a sine b e equals one half of uh, cosine of a minus b minus cosine of a plus b now considering this first term um, this is a and the second term as b uh, and applying this expression what we have is uh, the average DC link current ID of T equals this magnitude times this one half times cosine of uh, A minus B so A and B both have 377 T so that gets cancelled and what we are left with is um, this 3.295 minus, uh, minus 30 so that is 33.295 and the second term is uh, cosine of A plus B so these two terms they double so gives you this twice the line frequency term 2 times 377t and its uh, sum of 3.2 minus 30 gives you this minus 26.6 um, degrees so that's the complete expression for the DC link current and we can simplify it further um, so the first term here is the uh, the DC term so that will be this product times cosine of 33.295 which uh, is 0.836 I think so that product is 11.24 and uh, the second term is a is a time varying term it's a cosine term at twice the frequency and that will be this magnitude which is 13.45 uh, and uh, this 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 part of the expression now again to uh, re-emphasize since uh, id is a product is a product of two sinusoidal terms we cannot use uh, phasor analysis so this is uh, uh, easier done in the time domain as we did here now we can also get the uh, DC link current from a different method and that is using the concept of power balance so um, in this average model using the uh, power balance in a cycle by cycle average sense uh, we can um, write that the power from the DC source which is VD times the average current ID power so by power balance that should be equal to the power going out of this uh, second report um, now the uh, DC link power is not exactly equal to the AC grid power because of the active and reactive power losses in the uh, resistance and the inductance respectively but the DC power is exactly equal to the uh, in, a, in a CCA sense equal to the uh, power from the second report because there are no uh, energy storage elements between these two locations between the second side and the DC source okay so the power from the second report is this VAB average times the current coming out which is IG so VAB of T times IG of T is same as this uh, DC link power and uh, we want the DC link current therefore divide this whole thing by V sub D to get the DC link current so let's substitute the number so ID average is uh, 1 over 450 which is this V sub D times uh, VAB peak is 356.33 and IG peak was 33.96 and uh, VAB has a sign term um, with the leading angle of 3.3 .3 degrees and the current has a sine term with a lagging minus 30 degrees okay therefore the uh, DC link current once you simplify this will come out to be exactly what we calculated in the in the previous slide using the different method using the transformer principle in fact it's very easy to see that the two expressions are identical uh, if you write VAB average this is the same as um, um, VC the control voltage times the, the DC link voltage that is the VAB uh, average uh, and uh, just uh, cancel VD in both these expressions and then we get back the original expression that we used to calculate the DC link current that is ID equals VC times IG next uh, let's take a closer look at the uh, the two components of the average DC link current so the DC link current as we derived in the previous two slides is shown here and uh, it has two components the first one is this uh, DC component and this corresponds to the actual active power delivered by the DC source uh, in, in case 1 in case 2 it will be the actual active power absorbed by the DC source the uh, value of this uh, DC component is given by um, one half of uh, this VC peak times IG peak, IG peak uh, times the cosine of the angle between the two uh, sinusoidal signals or it is also equal to the uh, total active power delivered at this port 
divided by the DC link voltage. Now we can also do a check to make sure that our calculations are correct and uh, that is to compare the uh, total um, active power processed. So from our uh, problem statement the grid power injected was 5000 and uh, the, the um, IG peak value we calculated was 33.96 therefore the um, um, power loss across this series resistance is uh, this I peak squared over 2 times the resistance. So that is uh, this quantity and together the total power that is delivered by the DC source by this method comes out to be this 5058 bands. Um, if you do the same calculation using VD times this ID average we get 450 times uh, this component which is 11.24 and we get the uh, same value which um, checks that uh, our methods, the, both the methods um, give the correct result. Okay, the next component is this uh, pulsating component. Uh, so this is a pulsation at um, uh, twice the line frequency or the grid frequency, 2 times 377T. Now obviously this term does not contribute to any active power, uh, but it still has a, a, a lot of practical significance. Uh, so for example, let's say the DC, uh, let's say we're considering a photovoltaic interface. So this DC so source is really from a PV. Okay, in that case, we'll have a um, um, fairly large capacitor here and uh, all this pulsating um, current component should be completely delivered by this capacitor, leaving only the um, purely DC component taken from the uh, DC source, from the PV source, in order to capture the maximum possible power. So in that case, to size this capacitance, we should have a good understanding of what this pulsating current component is. So the peak value of this pulsating component is given by one half of uh, the peak of this VC uh, times the uh, peak of this grid current IG. Um, and that will come out to be exactly this uh, magnitude. And uh, just like what we did in the case of the uh, DC component, if you want to get this in terms of the actual power processed by the converter, then this same expression is also given by um, the um, magnitude of the complex power processed by the converter, that is this S converter, divided by V sub D. Now S converter is defined as um, the um, total active power, which would be power delivered to the grid, plus the losses in the resistor in this case, uh, plus J times the reactive power. Now that includes the reactive power absorbed or delivered by the grid plus the reactive power lost in this filter inductor that is QL. Okay. Now substituting the numbers corresponding to this particular example, the real power as we calculated here is um, simply 5058 plus uh, J times this term is QG. So that is due to the 0.866 lagging power factor. The corresponding reactive power is 2887 um, VAR. And this term is the QL, that is the reactive power loss in this filter inductor. And this is uh, simply the VL, um, the cycle by cycle average VL and its peak value, or the fundamental component of VL, its peak value, uh, times the current through that, which is IG, and also its peak value divided by 2. So that will be the, um, the reactive power in this uh, filter inductor. And divide that by the 450, we should get back the uh, original 13.45 as we go out from the other methods. Okay, I also wanted to show some of the uh, waveforms of the um, different components of the DC link current. Now for reference I also show the uh, actual grid current IG uh, average of T and also the cycle by cycle average of the uh, converter output which is VAB bar. Uh, this brown waveform is, uh, is the grid voltage VG of T again shown for reference. So what is shown is one complete um, fundamental cycle 60 hertz so that's a 16.67 millisecond now these are the different components of the DC link current uh, this brown dotted line that is a DC component and uh, its magnitude as we saw in the previous slide is 11.24 amperes and this red dotted uh, waveform that is the um, pulsating component of the DC link current and that um, you can see by comparing these two waveforms it is at twice the frequency of the first set of waveforms so this is at 120 hertz and uh, its uh, peak value um, so that the zero is here and the peak value here is um, um, as we calculated 13.45 amperes and the sum of these two components this DC and this pulsating component 
is the complete DC link current, which is this blue waveform. Okay. So predominantly, it's uh, it's positive. There's only a small uh, negative portion here, and that corresponds to the um, the uh, lagging power factor that we we are considering in uh, in case one. 